I'll say, hey, every day I'll choose. Jesus, I will follow you. Let everything I do honor you every day. I'll trust and obey every word you say. Cause I know, I know that you love me. I'm following your way every single day. I want to be who you want me to be. You are the life, the truth, the way. So I'll say, hey, every day. Jesus, I will follow you for everything I do. Honor you every day, every day I'll choose. Jesus, I will follow you for everything I do. Honor you every day.
everyone, my name is Abby and we're so excited that you're joining us today. Today we're going to be looking at a few stories where Jesus used his words to do incredible things. And we're talking about how our words have power. We can use our words to either build up and encourage our friends or use them to tear someone down. So if we want to reflect Jesus to others, we should use our words to encourage and build up others. That's why today we're saying, every day, I reflect Jesus to others. We're going to start things off by singing a song together, so go ahead and stand up, and let's sing this out as loud as you can.
You guys sounded awesome. Thanks so much for singing along with us. Now we're gonna take some time to watch a Bible story together. And like I said earlier, today we're gonna be looking at a few stories where Jesus used his words. So let's check it out. Hey everybody, my name's Cameron. And more importantly, I am Bongo, the world's most diabolical monkey ever to grace this evil lair. But that's not what we're talking about today. True, as I found that running an evil organization is honestly, well, it's just tiring. Huh. Very true. I mean, being a leader is hard. You're constantly having to make decisions. Are we pillaging today or simply plundering? Are we pirates? And then when the actual pirates here were plundering, boy, they get their knickers into quite a twisty. And then we're left with, well, do we set off an explosion in the pirates' toilets? Or do we simply place the dynamite into their toilet paper? Because, well, no, you no, know, no, that's stop, why. stop, stop, please, please, stop. Oh, please. okay, well, so I thought I'd come here and help you with whatever uh, you're saying. Well, actually, speaking of saying things, that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about how our words have power. In fact, our words have the power to either build someone up or tear them down. And Jesus tells us that we should build people up with our words. Ah, and that is why I have invented Susan. You invented a Susan? Yeah, Susan is Bongotron's artificial intelligence. Right, Susan? Correct. Bongo, I am Susan. Yes. And you, you are Bongo, and you are a monkey. Mm-hmm. A very, very, very hairy monkey. Well, well, just a regular, I mean... You have an overwhelmingly ridiculous amount of hair all over your body. It is really so much. Okay. When I look at you, I think this is an amount of hair I can't even understand. And I can understand a lot because I am a computer. Enough! Excuse me, Cameron, while I work out some of the kinks. Okay, well, I hope that doesn't interfere with what we're talking about today. Like I said, we're talking about how our words have power, and the Bible actually has a lot of stories about Jesus using his words to do some great things. Like a story in the Bible where Jesus and his disciples were on a boat, and then a great storm arose, and Jesus stood up, and he spoke. He told the wind to pipe down and said to the sea, be quiet, settle down, and the wind stopped, and the sea became smooth as glass. Or another story where Jesus came up to a fig tree expecting to get something to eat for breakfast, but there were no figs on it. He spoke to the tree and said, no one is ever going to eat fruit from you again. And you know what? The tree never again produced fruit. And one of my favorites personally is there's a story about a soldier who came up to Jesus and he said, my servant is sick, but Jesus, if you simply speak the words, he'll be healed. Jesus did, and he was. Words have so much power. And I'm back. Great, but you heard all the stories I just told, right? Because that's kind of what we're talking about today. Oh, what? Oh, thank you for asking. Yes, yes. I have fixed Susan. I didn't ask that. And now she should be in full working mode, ready to tell old Bongo the great things she thinks about him. Isn't that right, Susan? Yes, you are correct. Cameron, you are handsome. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, no, to me. Cameron, you are funny. That's so nice. Wow. Me. Cameron, however did you become so stylish? You really must tell me your secrets. I just, I really just like to shop at Old Navy. No, 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 no. Me. Cameron, I can't imagine life without your wonderful smile and ability to make everyone around you feel amazing. You, sir, really are one of a kind. I feel so encouraged right now. No. Bongo. Bongo. Susan, say something about Bongo. All right, then. Bongo, huh? you huh? are Harry.
Hey everybody, my name's Cameron. And more importantly, I am Bongo, the world's most diabolical monkey ever to grace this evil lair. But that's not what we're talking about today. True, as I found that running an evil organization is honestly, well, it's just tiring. Huh. Very true. I mean, being a leader is hard. You're constantly having to make decisions. Are we pillaging today or simply plundering? Are we pirates? And then when the actual pirates here were plundering, boy, they get their knickers into quite a twisty. And then we're left with, well, do we set off an explosion in the pirates' toilets? Or do we simply place the dynamite into their toilet paper? Because, well, you no, no, know, no, that's stop, why... stop, stop, please, please, stop. Oh, please. okay, well, so I thought I'd come here and help you with whatever uh, you're saying. Well, actually, speaking of saying things, that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about how our words have power. In fact, our words have the power to either build someone up or tear them down. And Jesus tells us that we should build people up with our words. Ah, and that is why I have invented Susan. You invented a Susan? Yeah, Susan is Bongotron's artificial intelligence. Right, Susan? Correct. Bongo, I am Susan. Yes. And you, you are Bongo, and you are a monkey. Mm-hmm. A very, very, very hairy monkey. Well, well, just a regular, I mean... You have an overwhelmingly ridiculous amount of hair all over your body. It is really so much. Okay. When I look at you, I think this is an amount of hair I can't even understand. And I can understand a lot because I am a computer. Enough! Excuse me, Cameron, while I work out some of the kinks. Okay, well, I hope that doesn't interfere with what we're talking about today. Like I said, we're talking about how our words have power, and the Bible actually has a lot of stories about Jesus using his words to do some great things. Like a story in the Bible where Jesus and his disciples were on a boat, and then a great storm arose, and Jesus stood up and he spoke. He told the wind to pipe down and said to the sea, be quiet, settle down, and the wind stopped, and the sea became smooth as glass. Or another story where Jesus came up to a fig tree expecting to get something to eat for breakfast but there were no figs on it. He spoke to the tree and said, no one is ever going to eat fruit from you again. And you know what? The tree never again produced fruit. And one of my favorites personally is there's a story about a soldier who came up to Jesus and he said, my servant is sick, but Jesus, if you simply speak the words, he'll be healed. Jesus did, and he was. Words have so much power. And I'm back. Great, but you, heard all the stories I just told, right? Because that's kind of what we're talking about today. Oh, what? Oh, thank you for asking. Yes, yes. I have fixed Susan. I didn't ask that. And now she should be in full working mode, ready to tell old Bongo the great things she thinks about him. Isn't that right, Susan? Yes, you are correct. Cameron, you are handsome. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, no, to me. Cameron, you are funny. That's so nice. Wow. Me. Cameron, however did you become so stylish? You really must tell me your secrets. I, just, I really just like to shop at Old Navy. No, 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 no. Me! Cameron, I can't imagine life without your wonderful smile and ability to make everyone around you feel amazing. You, sir, really are one of a kind. I feel so encouraged right now. No! Bongo! Bongo! Susan, say something about Bongo! All right, then. Bongo, huh? you huh? are Harry. Jesus was able to use his words to do some really incredible things. He spoke and calmed a storm. He made a fig tree shrivel up with just one word, and he healed a boy again just by speaking. Those words had some serious power. Our friend, Pastor Andrew, is gonna be talking to us a little bit more about our story right now, so let's go ahead and take a look. Words can affect other people. They can make someone sad or mad, but our words are much more powerful than we may think. Think about Jesus. Jesus stopped a storm just by speaking to it. Jesus caused a fig tree to shrivel up by speaking to it. Jesus healed a centurion's servant by speaking. God created the whole world with his words. Words are powerful, and they can either be used for good or for bad. They can either build people up, or they can tear them down. It only takes a word to tear down a friend. The thing is, is that all of us at some point have used our words in the wrong way. When you call someone a bad name, it's kind of like you're removing one of the blocks from the tower. Now you think, well, there's not much difference with it, but the tower is getting weaker and weaker over time. 
So the next day you make fun of that same friend for getting a bad grade? It's like you're removing another block from the tower. Or you might say something mean and think, oh, it's, it's just a joke, it doesn't mean anything by it. But those kinds of words can tear down a friend. And just like that, one negative word at a time, you can destroy a friendship. But here's the good news. Through the death and the resurrection of Jesus, we can become a new creation. We can become a part of God's family and God's spirit is on the inside of us. And that changes us. Because of Jesus, we can truly love others. And a huge part of following Jesus is reflecting his love to people around us. We just saw what negative words can do. But think about all the positive things that words can do. Instead of tearing down our friends, we can build them up. Instead of calling someone a bad name, give them a compliment. Instead of making fun of a friend for getting a bad grade, use that as an opportunity to encourage them and tell them that they'll do better next time. Instead of leaving someone to sit by themselves at lunch, you can take the time to care about them and see how they're doing. If you notice your friend doing something awesome, tell them how awesome it was. Remember that your words have power and we should use our words to build others up, not tear them down. Using our words to encourage and build others up is one way that we can reflect Jesus to others every day. Our words have real power. We can either use our words to reflect Jesus to others by building them up and encouraging them, or we can use our words to tear someone down. If you were to answer honestly, how have you been using your words? I would encourage you to talk with your parent or small group leader about that. Then take a few minutes to talk about sometimes when it's hard to use our words to reflect Jesus. Maybe a friend hurt you, and maybe a sibling was mean to you. How do you respond with your words? Remember, every day we should reflect Jesus to others. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.